what's up in the loop? You're looking at Ireland's only wooden roller coaster and really only major roller coaster. We're here at today at Tato Park. But before we jump in, uh, let's let's step back about two hours and we're going to show you how to get to this park because it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. There's no train here, but there is a bus. So uh, uh, let's let's take a look at how to get here. All right, step one: catch the bus here just uh, outside city center it's line 103 and it runs every day the park is open despite the timetable online showing only saturday and sundays i confirm with the bus company and the park that they run on the days that are open get on here and uh, it's about an hour journey to the park So the bus was round trip for two people, just under 20 euros, so you know, 22, 23 dollars, about 10 dollar, 10 US dollars a person to take the trip round trip. And it's not a direct bus. Um, it does make probably about 15 stops, but it takes about an hour to get out to the park. It's not your usual city bus. It's a little bit more like a longer bus kind of thing uh, where you would, um, you know, the seats are a little bit more comfortable. They do have USB chargers on there, something to know. But then it, it drops you off right here next to the Giant Wonder Roller Coaster. So highly recommend that route. To put in perspective, we looked at getting a cab. A cab was going to be roughly like 60 to 70 euros each way. Um, and not super much faster. Only, the only downside is they only have two or three buses a day that run out here. So... Um, if you're like us and only had a little bit of time to spend here, um, we're kind of, you know, at the mercy of the bus. But not too bad, we're right here at the entrance of the park, so let's go on in. Like I said, we are at Tato Park. It is about 40-45 minutes uh, north of Dublin, kind of in the middle of nowhere. And Tato gets his name, uh, this guy, that's Mr. Tato. Uh, a potato chip company. There's a factory tour, we'll check that out. Um, the main reason here is for this uh, giant gravity group coaster, the biggest coaster in Ireland. Just got off the wooden coaster. I can't, I'm not gonna even try to pronounce it. Uh, it's some like Irish, Irish name here. But. <laughs> just got off the wooden roller coaster here. I'm not gonna try to pronounce the name, it's some Irish name. But that's a 105 foot drop there. Uh, and it actually goes pretty far out there. I'll edit in some kind of footage showing how big the ride is right now. But overall, I thought it was a decent ride. Um, I'm going to try to get in the back. Got a little double down there. A little airtime hill there. Double down over here. It suffers, it suffers from every other gravity group Timberline where the thing just shakes you like crazy. I, wearing my uh, wedding ring for the first time on a roller coaster. And like, I thought the thing was just like, it was vibrating uncontrollably on my finger, it was crazy. Um, so, a little disappointing there, because it is a fun layout with some really cool pops at airtime. Similar to like, I, I say like, Mind Blower, um, except that it's just a little bit more spread out. So where Mind Blower is like, airtime hill, airtime hill, airtime hill, relentless right after each other. This has a little bit of space in between uh, some of the elements, but overall, still a, still a really fun ride. Solid coaster. Just wish Gravity Group could figure out some of the roughness issues with the Timberlanders. So we missed the uh, junior coaster here, probably by about two weeks. You can see the ride's all done car is on the brake run but they're getting ready to landscape it 
I think uh, the amount of landscaping they have sitting under this ride to be planted is more than uh, some other theme parks in the U.S. have altogether. So uh, props on that. It uh, looks like it'll be nicely landscaped. The ride does have a cool uh, look at trains. Besides uh, the big wooden roller coaster you see in the background there, uh, the park does have some uh, pretty good flight rides. Here's uh, just one of the few. Now a lot of parks have uh, rock climbing walls, but this one's huge. This one has to be at least 50 feet tall. Like, and it has like the obstacle up there. Like usually you see like little 10 foot ones that are pretty easy, but it, I've been rock climbing a few times in like rock climbing gyms and it's bigger and almost challenging than some of the walls there. It's crazy. On the back side of the rock climbing wall, the tower here, there's a crazy, crazy slide. Look, look at that. I don't even think slides are supposed to be bent, bent like that. Have this uh, fairly basic uh, ropes course here in the middle of the pathway. Um, it's closed off. A lot of the stuff in the park seems closed off. I don't know if it's because it's a weekday or it seems like they're still doing a lot of construction. They have a lot of projects planned in the next few years. Um, so I'm not sure if this is rehab or if this is just uh, coming soon. Uh, very Western themed train here. hard to tell in this video, but this thing is hauling a lot faster than your little like CB honey to the Here's the children's area and this is probably the least themed area of the park. It kind of looks like a carnival kind of uh, set up shop here. It's still nice for what it is. You got a nice planter here. Rocking on the boat there. The main reason we're over here is for this uh, SBF Visa theme to ladybugs. This might get the award. I just said not a very well themed area. Hey, this might get the award for best themed SBF Visa spinning coach. I mean, look at this. There's like a tunnel over there. This is a uh, pretty well done there, uh, theming wise for for uh, SBF coaster. You know, mushrooms are huge. We got a moose on a loose style right here. Of course, it's not as good. Haven't been on it yet, but I can tell you it's not as good because it's not moose on the loose. But they do have like 15 horses here compared to like three mooses. Moose on the loose. It does go through a nice little landscaped area. Have all back in here. I know, should we do it? She's surveying the land. It goes all the way back there. Let's go do it. In addition to the flight school roller coaster they're opening, they have driving school. Definitely getting some, uh, getting some Legoland vibes from this park. It might be good though. You could practice your uh, traffic circles here. So uh, yeah, huh. definitely Legoland vibes with a lot of like the educational stuff they have here at the park. So Tato is a brand of potato chips here in Ireland. And of course they have a factory tour. I kind of think of this a little bit as like a Hershey Park where uh, you got, you know, Hershey themed stuff, you got uh, potato chip stuff. And we're just hoping, like Hershey Park, you get some free potato chips at the end. Uh, let's go find out. It looks like you have to like leave the park to get to the tour. No, no. Maybe. I don't think so. All right, we double checked the map. And yes, you leave the park here. Got to look both ways to go to the factory tour. Oh, and then you gotta cross another road over here. Interesting. So it was worth walking outside of the park because they actually take you to the, the actual factory. It's not just some like little fake thing they have in the park. Let's go on in and see what the experience is all about. All right, more potatoes for Mr. Tino. And uh, we got some projection mapping on the floor here. And it already smells like potato. They're definitely pumping in potato scents here. Oh, he's gone to get more spuds. There. 
nab it on the floor here. Um, step up in here. We got potato chips. Oh man, those look good. I've not had potato, tato potato chips uh, yet. So uh, we'll have to check that out. More potato chips. Look at that. I think that is that like is that the salt or the flavor? Oh, that's the flavor right there. Look at that. The magic being ha made right there. And here they are uh, getting bagged. One thing to note, uh, as you would expect, Sundays have limited production as well as bank holidays. So if you come here on Sundays and holidays, don't expect to see much moving in the factory. But we're here on a uh, Wednesday and uh, things are going full steam ahead over here. We got uh, a whole bunch of uh, big old bags of good looking potato chips being bagged up. And they're going in boxes and uh, off to off to all over Ireland, as they say. And then they end the tour with the history of the company. Probably kind of a nice idea to end with the history uh, so you don't lose the kids before they see all the fun stuff. Mr. Tato, the man inside the jacket. Here's a bunch of facts. I think probably the uh, the coolest one from all of these is number one, over five million packs of potato of potatoes are produced every week. It's crazy. Definitely a family friendly park as it stands right now. I know they're getting ready to unveil some larger attractions down the down the road, but you got like a one of many playgrounds over here. Definitely a you know Kind of, again, Legoland vibes, I think probably um, besides a few of the big attractions up front, the target demographic is probably that like three to 12 year old. Um, and then, you know, they're, they're trying to go after that teenage and uh, young adult and adults with the, the new thrill rides, which is pretty cool. So half the park is actually a zoo. I, I get very much like wild adventure vibes from the park where you got a couple big rides, a couple small rides, and then uh, quite, quite a bit of animal attractions and, um, Animal exhibits are done up pretty well. Look at that. So we'll show you all a little bit of the animals right now. While they have a lot of animals, a lot of them are smaller variety. Like you have raccoons here. A lot of similar sized animals. You're not gonna see like elephants or those really large scale animals you might see at your typical big zoo, but uh, still a uh, really nice uh, animal exhibits here. Oh, look at them, they're trying to climb down there. Oh, you got these little foxes over here. Oh, look, this guy. Ah, oh, I wish I was like him, taking a little, little nap. You can definitely tell the park is only a couple years old uh, with uh, how nice the uh, exhibits are. Oh, whoop, I see a couple over there. Look at that. Oh, and then you got one. Look at himself over there. Oh. Look at this little guy right here. These little things are called bush dogs. Like a pig meets a dog. <laughs> Mecca. Nice little uh, enclosure there. Not too big, but uh. Well, he's looking, he's looking this way. Yeah, we're from America too, buddy. They got tons of merch with the little mascot guy all over it. Bends, snow globes, erasers. The only real merchandise for the coaster is this uh, like Ziploc bag thing. Comes with the free pen! Uh, there is also, uh, I should say, that's not the only thing for the coaster. You do got these pretty cool looking coffee mugs. And if you want a Mr. Tato apron, there is that option as well. Another flat ride here, it's in for like air race. 
So there is a, two ways you can get in the park. There is a, the basic entry ticket that allows you entry in uh, to walk around and see, you know, the animal exhibits and whatnot, and a few other little things. And then there is uh, wristbands that you can buy for the rides uh, or uh, tokens. Um, we went wristband, just make sure we can see everything. But if you're coming here just for a quick like credit run, now this might not hold true once the new coasters open in the next few years. But it might be best just to buy tokens. Uh, the wristband itself is like 20-ish euros, I think more. Um, and you know, if you're just looking to get the two credits uh, as it stands right now, that credit opens in a few weeks, that might change. Um, it might be better to just go tokens. Opening later this year is this really cool double zip line roller coaster. So if you count those things, that's two more credits for you there. It's, it's pretty high up there, probably a good 75 feet or so. Uh, that could be a quite, quite cool when done. It's kind of in the back corner, so this is really the only spot I have to uh, kind of show it off. More Zamperla rides over here. This corner of the park uh, with the coaster, this is kind of like a thrill area. Uh, got for the flat rides and the big coaster. Quick update after my second ride. I sat a little bit further towards the back. Got a little bit more air time, but man, you could also just see how much the cars just shake, rattle, bounce up and down. Uh, I don't know what what's up with the timber liners, but maybe because there's like not a lot to them, but I could just, it, you just felt like a vibrating chair the whole whole ride. Uh, I kind of took away from it, even though it's a really cool layout and some pretty decent pops of air time. One ride that I did not get on is Viking Voyage. It's actually a really cool looking water ride here. Um, see the, the queue's pretty well themed. The line is, you know, a mix of like dirt and pathway, but um, you can see the Viking head over there. It's just people are coming up super, super, super wet. And it's like 50 degrees. So uh, big note for me there, despite how cool it looks. They must have got a discount on this uh, log cabin design because every building, whether it's the toilets, the gift shop, coffee place, is all this uh, same design. So here's one of the disappointing things. All the blue places in the park are closed except one, and it's in the very back corner. It makes it difficult to kind of get food when you're anywhere but the super, super back corner of the park and you need to start serving hot foods to me. All right, we got some of the smoky bacon potato. They have four flavors, smoky bacon, salt and vinegar, cheese and onion, and something cocktail. And this was probably the one we're at being picky eaters. We felt might be most approachable. Interesting taste because it sunflower oil. I don't really get a bacon taste to it. It definitely tastes the sunflower oil though. Strange. Not my favorite kind of chips. Well, we tried to leave. But that locked us in. All right, so that is uh, Tato Park. Uh, you know, I kind of mixed reviews on this one here. I, I enjoyed uh, enjoyed it for what it is. It's kind of a mix if you took like Owa with like, you know, some stock Zamperla rides kind of put in like a concrete jungle mixed with um, Wild Adventures with the zoo horse. And then they kind of also had some Legoland feel to it. Will certainly be a cool uh, park to keep an eye on over the next few years. Um, just because they have uh, some ambitious expansion uh, plans, including, you know, already opening a new roller coaster a few weeks after I filmed uh, this video. So, um, of course, roller coaster uh, coming in. I will say overall, uh, we're checking out if you have extra time in Dublin. I don't know if I would recommend jumping over to Ireland just for the park or just for the coaster. Um, and even if you're in Ireland, I think going to like Cliffs of Moher, and doing uh, like the Jameson cocktail tour that we did yesterday, which was awesome. Um, I would do that over uh, this park here. So don't go out of your way to come here, but if you're spending a couple extra days in the Dublin area in Ireland, and you have a little extra time to kill, then come on over. But I don't think as of itself, it's strong enough rides or strong enough park to, uh, to dictate coming over here just by itself.
Hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, blah, 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 all that good stuff. Let me know what you think. Have you been here? Am I the only one who doesn't really care for the coaster as much? I heard it got a lot of good reviews, so let me know if I'm wrong.